Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Samaria Covert. Um, let me introduce myself for those who are new to my channel or wherever you're watching this from. I am a licensed therapist with close to 20 years worth of experience. It'll be 20 years next August. Uh, I am a, um, a uh, private practice owner of an organization called Clean and Creative Counseling, where I'm located right now. I am a published author of close to 90 books. I just started book number 89. Um, I released book number 88 recently. And that book was called, no, I had the Ministry of Doors. Oh, the Brook about the times of transition. That was 88. I'm working on book number 89. And God gave me the title of book number 90. <laughs> So as you can clearly tell, I'm obsessed with writing. Um, what else about me? I love purple. You can't see my full office. You only see like a little piece of it, but we maybe you can see, you can see my, my um, uh, rug if you're watching this. Um, but I love purple. And uh, I love me some Jesus. That sets me apart um, from the rest. Okay, so Holy Spirit, welcome into our session today. This is not a therapy session. What is the session? <laughs> it's about a wisdom uh, sign that someone is secretly competing with you. It's going to be a good one. And make sure you subscribe because next week we're going to talk about uh, the curse of being the responsible one. It's about family dynamic when you are the responsible one. I promise y'all, it's going to be good. But we're going to talk about signs that you are someone secretly competing um, with you. And you have to excuse my, cam my um, camera angles. I'm still kind of trying to get used to this new camera angle and stuff. I look down and up and all the gap kind of stuff. Don't let that distract you. Okay. So sign someone is secretly uh, competing with you. And that is true. And I told the story before. Sometimes God, I have a real close relationship with God. He really does be speaking to me. And uh, I had a colleague of mine and, um, and uh, that I've known for a long time. But every time I say something, they always, they almost like try to say the opposite. It can be something like the sky's blue and they'll say, yeah, but it's not really as green. Like, it's just, you know how people are. <laughs> and I, <laughs> they just do the most. And um, I remember um, just the Lord said, scenario, sometimes people are secretly competing with you and you don't even know it. So we think competing uh, opponents, right? Rivals, sibling rivals, whatever kind of rival. But sometimes you not compete with anybody. Like me, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I'm not an athlete. I'm not competing with, they're competing with you. You don't even know it. And sometimes you become aware uh, after some time with some signs and seasons because it's, it's after what I just become the parent. And, you know, I give you stories from my own life. I'm not bragging in any way, but I do like to give you some examples um, just so, and you know, just because it, it, it makes sense. And I don't always, um, anyway, so I, I just give you examples from my life. Um, but I remember I was in the room, true story, y'all. And I was with someone I wasn't with them, but they were, they were in the room, put it that way. And, you know, I'm a business owner and um, I've, God has blessed me to accomplish um, some things, but I don't walk into a room. I don't have to be seen. I don't have to be known. Like you don't got to know my name. I don't walk up to the room like, Hey, I'm Dr. Samaria. And I'm da, 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 da. I don't do that. Like literally I introduce myself as Samaria. Like I'm not big boss in charge. Like I don't need a special seat. Like I'm real chill. But sometimes again, people are competing with you and you don't know. So they were having an outside conversation. They were loud enough just so I can hear. Because sometimes when you have a competitive spirit, you're loud just for, for no good sake. I'm, 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 I'm successful too. And I have a business too. And I, and, and, and I knew that they were on the side, subtle way, talking about me. And I was like, well, yo, congratulations. Like, when you are who you are, you don't have to compete with anyone, okay? So let's, let's begin. Now, remember this. I do have to give you this caveat. I've done this before. Let's talk about it again. That with there's comp competition, you will always see a division. You will always see jealousy. You always see envy. Jealousy is people don't like what you have. Envy is they're going to strategize to do something about it. Here is the caveat. Remember this. Everybody is not jealous of you. Now, I know some Mary Wait, we talk about competition, but I got to get this disclaimer. I, we can't go further without me giving this disclaimer, without me giving you excuse me, this disclaimer, everybody is not jealous of you. Sometimes people are telling you the truth that you don't want to hear and you want to live in this place called delusion. Everybody ain't jealous of you. Everybody don't want your stuff. 
Everybody that tells you what you, uh, everyone that says something to you that you don't want to hear does not mean they're motivated by jealousy. Just because you have something that someone else doesn't, that, that if you have something that someone else uh, does not have, it doesn't mean they're jealous of your success. Uh, I don't assume because I got a business and maybe a friend of mine doesn't, I don't assume they're jealous of me. And I'll tell you why, sometimes we ruin godly relationships because we don't discern the heart of the person that's giving us the critique. And we are really friends. You ought to be able to say, hey, friend, this relationship. Hey, friend, uh, you need to do better at that. Hey, friend. So now we end up calling enemies friends and en uh, enemies friends and, en and friends enemies because they don't validate us. You don't want to ruin good godly relationships because you have accusations against somebody. Just because you do something and people don't agree with it. And if they really love you, they'll, they'll pull you to the side like, hey, friend, listen. I want this for you. I want you to be in a relationship. I want you to have a new car. I want you to buy. But the way you're going about it, I love you, friend. But if you just, well, you just yell at me, that may be a character. That makes the, that may be a character issue with you. I had a friend of mine. This is years ago. We ain't friends to this day. Like uh, they were just going down the wrong path as far as relationships, and I really cared about the person. Now I wasn't in a relationship with anybody. I still cared about the person. I felt convicted by the Holy Spirit to tell the person, "Hey, this is not the relationship that God wants you to have." Oh, you jealous? And that, I know you years, but you know how hurtful that was. So all of a sudden you get in relationship. See, if if all of a sudden you get into a relationship and your auntie, your mama, your daddy, your cousin, the people that love you have who have shown their character to be true to you, like and they're like jealous of you, that's your issue. So we're not going to pass the thought of people who think everybody's competing with them. Uh, a lot of times y'all get into these toxic relationships, uh, how they tend to lure you away. If they do begin to say, well, they're just jealous of our love. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that every time you get to a relationship, people are not going to be jealous of you, but you are dealing with a toxic person. They want to, they want to isolate you from your family or your friends. So they're going to say, oh, your sister's jealous of you. Your mom's jealous of you. Your, 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 your best buddy, your, your uncle, your cousin, your children. Everybody just jealous of they jealous of I love. And that's why they don't agree with I love and all the kinds of mm -mm. you're dealing with a sniper. I mean, excuse me, you're dealing with a oh, ooh, where that come from? So very you're dealing with a manipulator. And they want to get to your ear. That's why you gotta be careful who you deal with. Everybody is not jealous of you. Sometimes you're just delusional and you want people to pacify you. You don't really want a friend, you want a fan. And you need to decide who you want. Do you want a friend or do you want a fan? Because you want to be a friend to somebody. You're going to have to hear the truth at some point from someone who truly loves you. Now, you got uh, the flip side that you always got a friend. They always got, no matter what you do, they always got something negative. Say, that's that's when you're dealing with a jealous person. There's a difference, okay? Whew. So when it's God, they can see it in you. It's called discernment, Okay. When they always got some a problem with other people, and they always criticizing other people, and they and you next in line to for that miracle, it's not discernment. <laughs> oh, call it's called insecurity, pessimism, and, com and competition. All right. So before you start cutting people off, <laughs> ask God, is this true? Right. Uh, so let's talk about signs someone is secretly competing with you, and then we'll go from there. But ask yourself, Lord, now uh, you know if you got it as well. <laughs> let me not. I don't. Well, that we'll have to talk about. about, about. I was about to go left. I forgot about to go left. Hold on. We can go there. Um, but anyway, if you if you're if you're unsure, just say, God, is this me? Is this true? So let's talk about signs someone is jealous of or secretly competing with you. They're secretly competing with you. They watch it, they minimize your success while heightening their accomplishments. Oh, I ain't you you wrote that little book, honey. I didn't wrote five books. That ain't nothing. you see what I'm saying? Like. When you are truly not competing with someone, you don't have to put yourself up at a pedestal at the expense of other people. Now, you should feel proud about your accomplishments. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you minimize other people's success, because remember, when you are get to do to do what you do, people don't see the behind the scenes uh, issue. They don't. They don't see it, right? And so you make it look easy. But oh, great, I can do that in my sleep, honey. <sighs> Whatever. They're competing with you. Even when you are successful, and that's how you are more successful than certain people around you. When you really have a heart for God and it's not a competition, you can still celebrate someone else because you've been there. Then take away from you. Oh, watch this one. Y'all see this one all, all the time. But I'm telling you, this ain't, this ain't God. This ain't no prophetic. This ain't no uh, ministry. This is a someone who is secretly competing with you. 
they use social media as a tool to bring division, but they claim to be led by God. Let me say that again, just so we are very, 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 very clear, because we are seeing this so much contentiousness in the body of Christ. We're seeing it on social media, people, platforms, and your in your podcast and all that. They use social media as a tool to bring division to, uh, to bring division, and yet they claim they're being led by God. Now they're not being led by God, but they're claiming to be led by God. Right, because God don't God ain't messy, and so a lot of times people say, "Well, God said, and I'm just I'm the hero, and I'm I'm trying to bring clarity to this situation." And 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 you just happen to have someone, just so happen to have someone that's doing something so similar to you, and now God has called you. You don't know the person personally, or even if you do, you don't have their phone number, or God ain't God just don't do stuff like that. It's just you got to read your word. So now we want to go on social media and say, I just need the Lord told me to expose and to bring clarity about this situation. Competing. Notice the character of someone's community. They see themselves as a gatekeeper. They are doing, you are doing something very similar to them. How many coaches are out there? How many therapists are out there? How many writers are out there? How many um, entrepreneurs are out there? Uh, how many um, mm, how many cooks are out there, right? Uh, how many females are out there? I, I, I'm being facetious, but they you just happen to be in the same field that they're in. You may be more successful. Maybe you're not. Maybe they just see themselves as a gatekeeper. So they'll say that I have a mission to be clarity and, cl- and, and clearance. And they just believe that God has told them to take out their cell phone. Or take out their camera. Saints, the Lord say, but you can't take out your phone and call them. You're not bringing clarity to anything if you don't have that personal cell phone number. You can't walk up to them and have a personal conversation. Brethren means relationship. If you don't have a personal phone, if you don't have someone's personal phone number, I'm not talking about their business phone number, their personal phone number, then God has not personally called you and told you to bring clarity to anything. Scripture, Samaria, so, so glad you asked. Galatians chapter six, let's start the first verse. We're gonna read this from the New King James Version. And it reads like this. If a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, watch this, restore. Does it say divide? Does it mean conquer? Does it, it don't, uh, bring division, talk back and forth, <laughs> be messy. No, it says you who are spiritual, that means if you are claiming to be led by the spirit, you restore such a one with what? Watch this gentleness, considering lest you also be tempted. Gentleness, not harshness, not harsh toned, not assaulting, not, accus- not accusatory. Gentleness, that is a fruit of the spirit. When you are led by God, you will exhibit the fruit of the spirit to bear one another's burdens, as so to fulfill the law of Christ. The New Living Translation reads, uh, carry each other's uh, burdens. So we ought to lift in our burden, not add to it uh, with your mess. Uh, <laughs> verse three, for if anyone thinks to himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So it says, number one, if your brother sins, your goal is to restore, to be led by the spirit with gentleness. Now I want you to compare that to what we're seeing today. Is it restoring? Mm-mm. And when I say the restore, I'm not talking about restoring the body of Christ. It, it's, it's not limited. I mean to restore the person. That's what it's going. If that brethren, that means relationship, restore the person. If it's not in the spirit of judgment, I mean, if it's not in the spirit of gentleness, brother, it's judgment. It is not God. The scripture does not contradict itself. But anybody can add that God said to it to validate, to try to validate their mess. Give you another scripture. Uh, Matthew 18, start the 15th verse. We're going to read this from the New King James Version. And it reads, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go tell him his faults between you and him alone. So if you didn't go to the person alone and say, here, this is my personal issue with you that person is not being led by god 
They are secretly competing with you. If you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, Old Testament, when God sent a prophet forth to bring correction, he always did it alone first. Before God exposes them, before God exposes them, it was always alone first. Samuel, Jeremiah, if it was a infraction against another person, it was alone. And the false prophets always need an audience, but the true prophets were alone against the king. Now, if it was something they would bring correction to the body of Christ, like the nation of Israel had all sinned, okay? Then it wasn't a personal issue. It was brought before the nation because everybody was tripping. Wasn't one person attacking another person. It was, we got to bring, because a whole bunch of y'all inside decided to be, you know, that's what the difference was. When Samuel went to confront Eli about his not correcting his sons, he went, God spoke to Samuel alone. He then went to Eli alone. He went with a restorative nature, with gentleness, and he began to declare the word of God. It was never sent forth with disrespect. That's a whole other title for a different time. Watch this. Let's go back to Matthew 18. If he hears you, you have gained a brother. Okay? If he will not hear you, watch this. Then we take what? One or two more. Does that, does that mean a crowd of people? It says one or two or more. That by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word be established. So that means two or three. Does that mean a group of people? Mm -mm. Does that mean social media and all the world to see and going back and forth? Absolutely not. It says, it clearly says one or two people by the mouth or two or three witnesses. Watch, so there's a pattern here. And if he then refuses, then you tell it to the church. Then you make it public. If he refuses even to hear the church, okay, let him be like a heathen and a tax collector. So you see the pattern there? So, and I want you to hear me on this one. Anytime somebody gets behind their microphone, their platform, whatever that is, and they want to make a public display and attempt to humiliate somebody else, whether that person's right or wrong or in between, and they have not gone through the steps that the word of God has told us of how we are to address things. That individual is not being led by God or the Holy Spirit. They are being led by the spirit of competition, the spirit of jealousy and envy. They want to bring someone else down to put themselves up at a platform. They just will say God said to validate their agenda. So the reason you can't feel the anointing on these things is because it's not God. Proverbs 6, we're going to keep going moving forward. Sign someone that's here competing with you, but let's, let's talk about Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, the New Living Translation, and the six things the Lord hates. No seven things he detests. I mean, he greatly dislikes a haughty eye, which is pride. Pride is always rooted in competition anyway. A lying tongue, a hand that kills the innocent, um, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in the family. The King James Version says the person who sows discord among the brethren. What is this discord? What is discord? Division. That's Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. I read it through the New Living, New Living Translation. See, it's just wonderful. Y'all just read your Bible. I promise you, if you just read your Bible. And remember, if you, if you, if ever, Scripture does not contradict itself. If you are a good uh, Bible studier. It does not contradict himself. If it appears to contradict itself, it is not the Bible that's contradicting itself. It is me. I'm misunderstanding something. I have to read the Bible in context. Now, I gave you Old Testament. 
and I gave you New Testament. So New Testament grace does not give you a right to sow discord cord. You still have to follow the plan of God and the same thing with the Old Testament. Okay. Woo. All right. So point number three, they gather people to try to bring you down. They need an audience. You find this in the book of uh, Nehemiah. You know, they needed uh, all three of the other leaders to bring uh, Nehemiah down. They need to gather other people against you. They need an audience. Uh, put them for subliminal messages. You know, I told you about them. I'm successful too. Or people, you know, you 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 know what's like talking about you. I can't stand subliminal messages. You got to suddenly say, tell me to, well, don't tell me to my face. Let me just clarify. If I don't know you, we got a relationship, just keep it, just mind your business. I mean, just do your thing. I don't care. But if we cool, don't be giving me subliminal messages. Um, but you know, you just have to, uh, let me, I'm trying to give you an example. You know what a subliminal message is more like, they don't want to come out and say, it. well, these therapists out here, and I'm just using myself as an example. I don't really care. These therapists out here, they think they all that just because you're a therapist. What are you talking about? <laughs> these folks out here, and you know, I had a guy, okay. I, uh, I, you, I had a guy, uh, I had turned him down. Cause you know, I just can do that. And he was like, yeah, these, these black women out here. <laughs> and you know, you, 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 you all confident. You can't, you don't want a man. And da, 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 da. I don't know he was talking about me. I never said I didn't want a man. Didn't say I didn't need a man. I didn't, I didn't want him. And so because I didn't want him, he couldn't decide why sister Mary didn't want a broke joker who ain't handled y'all and live with his mama and all kinds of stuff. Why he could date me. See, he has, but it would couldn't couldn't could, could have been him. See, that's a that's a subliminal message. <laughs> he was upset. These black women out here, and you know, you you want you say you want a man and a man, a good man come to you, a nice man, and they want you, and then you know you turn them down. I don't care how nice you are. If you be a nice man, it's not qualified you to be a part of somebody's life. But that's a that's a different topic for a different time. Being nice does not qualify you at all. It just means you're a nice person. You can be a nice coworker. I mean, you can be nice to whoever you want to be nice to. But it does not mean that you're so you know, that's some subliminal messages, you know. And he got turned down, poor thing was in his feelings. You know what I mean? So people are doing you know subliminal messages like that. If you have an issue with someone, go back to what I mentioned in uh, uh Galatians 6 um uh, and then Matthew, uh have a conversation with that person. When I see I'm competing with you uh, people think they all that, and you know now you you know they they kind of throwing shade at you. We're not talking about the Holy Spirit who reveals all things. I'm talking about they throwing shade at you. Now you can't do nothing, and you know what I mean. It's more like whatever. Bro. <laughs> oh, what time? I'll tell you this. What time? Like this is not my church because I had missed like maybe uh, I think a, maybe a week or two at church. I have was on vacation, and I didn't serve in a ministry at this particular church. Remember, it's not my current church. So don't y'all come for me. It was an old church I was I was a member of, and I had missed like maybe a week and a half at church. And I don't play that control and stuff. So, um, but I wasn't serving any ministry at the time, so there's no need for me to like inform you that I'm not going to be in church on Sunday because that would be a controlling spirit. I don't really do that. But anyway, and so I felt like I came back to church the next day. Mind, you, I think I had missed a Sunday to Sunday, and then the 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 preacher was like, yeah, some of y'all listen can't even come to church and like. And I know he was kind of talking about me, but bro, I went on vacation. You see what I'm saying? That would be an example of subliminal messages. Anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, they don't support what you do. You becoming successful doesn't, so they, don't, they just don't support what you do. You say, you say you're friends, but you know, depending upon the product that you offer, they don't do anything. You write a book, they don't purchase. I mean, I'm not talking about, there's some things depending upon what you're selling, your friends may not be able to support you. If you got your new realtor's license, your friends may not be in a position to buy a house. So you, your friends are not always your clients. And I certainly get that. But you maybe you got a speaking engagement. Maybe you are sharing your stuff on social media. They don't share any of it. They, they, they literally don't support anything you do. You becoming successful, watch this, does not take away anything. That doesn't take away from anything that I am doing. So you, they can't celebrate you in any way. They can't celebrate you by supporting you. Well, either they don't have the finances because people are in different financial situations. They literally do absolutely nothing to support you in any way. They don't show up at an, an event. They don't say, hey, friend, they don't, you don't get a text message. Hey, sorry, I wasn't able to be there for, for whatever. I just want to know I love you. And I'm praying for you. You don't get a, a, a nothing. 
it's almost like whatever successful thing that you've been praying for for so long, they literally pretend like it didn't happen. They bring false accusations against you. I had someone say recently, how are you going to tell me what's in my heart? Well, you think you better than us. I never said that. How are you going to tell me what's in my heart? This is nothing I always had an issue with. How are you going to tell somebody what's in their heart? Then turn around and express it and then be upset with the other person that you expressed it to when they don't agree with your opinion of them. Oh, you think you better than us? No, I don't. Why are you that? You know what I'm saying? People get real. I'm just, I'm, I'm using that as an example. But I just think that's kind of weird, right? Like, even if you think less of someone, right? Why express it? Because they want to bring you down to size. Words are very, words are like weapons. They can be very hurtful. Watch this, put number seven. We're almost done, y'all. Um, uh-oh, are we almost done? Well, I thought we were. We're almost done. Lesson, they start doing what you're doing without the grace to do it. Or they start doing something similar to you and they are jealous. Watch this. The more successful you become, the more jealous they become. Remember King Saul who, was dealt, who saw David as his competition. He didn't see David as someone to mentor or develop. He saw David as someone to compete with. But David had the grace on his life. Saul, King Saul did not. So um, they say, so sometimes um, they do either. So sometimes, let's say, for example, they just start, oh, you're successful at writing or you're successful at this. They, they try to do the same thing. Oh, you, you want to do mentorship? Oh, I do. They just start doing stuff that you do and they never had a desire to do it before. I did a, a teaching call. How do you know someone is obsessed with you? Pick up that one. They bring false accusations and smear campaigns to anyone who will listen. Be careful listening to other listening to other people about other people. Don't do it. Now I, I mentioned. I mean, I mean gossip. Obviously, in therapy, we people come to therapy to deal with people who refuse to go to therapy. Okay, so that's a different story. People don't pay their copays to tell a t. All right, they just really don't or go to therapy to, to give it. You know, to gossip. But they are always the victim in everybody's story. I recently did a little reel, and I said sometimes you, no matter how much you try to explain yourself, no matter how much you try to. Um, say so that's not me, you know, and make it better. You will be the villain in their story. They have a learned helplessness and they are always the victim in every circumstance. Sometimes they get near you, watch it to deceive you. Be careful who have, who people who, who have, who want to get in your ear. So they do this. They either want to get near you because they want to be you. They want to get near you because they want to overthrow your position of authority, or they want to get near you because they want to borrow your influence. Watch the people who are clocking for positions in your life, particularly if you're successful on paper. It just happens. We got to gotta deal with it. You got to have some discernment of the people who want to be next to you. Okay. And it doesn't mean you don't like people. It doesn't mean you don't care about people. It does not mean you don't have heart for people. You just have to be, we have to be careful. They are argumentative. You do not have to argue. James 4, New Living Translation. And it reads, what is causing quarrels and fights among you? Watch this. Don't they come from evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have. Watch this. So you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight, wage war to watch this. Take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you don't ask God for it, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. What you adulterers, uh, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say that again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? I'm reading this. Um, then say that God is passionate that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. The spirit of God on the inside of you will bring you what you desire in life if you submit to the process. So the reason we don't want to wait on God, our motives are wrong. And oftentimes we are not willing to submit to the process that is really required to walk in certain things. So you, you may be successful on paper because you will submit it to the process. You know, my pastors all the time, they want your promise, but they don't want to submit to your process. Okay, and so we think we can scheme and scam our, our ways, ourselves into positions of, of, of prominence that God has not ordained for us to be. 
uh, verse six, he gives grace generously. And the scripture says, God opposes the proud. So when you have a competitive spirit, you have a spirit of pride and he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself before who God resists the devil. I mean, resist that di desire to compete and, and he will flee from you and God will elevate you in due season. Watch this. You can't reason with someone who is committed to misunderstanding. If you, if you don't hear anything else, you cannot reason with someone who is committed to that. They see you as your competition. If, if they see you as their competition, you can say, listen, just be yourself. God got it for you. You can say all that. They just don't. When, they, when you don't know who you are, bro. They see themselves as a gatekeeper. I mean, you got to go through them. If you didn't go through them, but God doesn't have to go through them, right? He'll do what, what he wants to do, how he wants to. But you, they think, because I'm successful here, you got to go through me. And you got to get my stamp of approval. God don't care nothing about that. Watch this. They need to promote themselves. They need to promote themselves. See, when you're really anointed for a position, the anointing will promote you. And the anointing will endorse you. But they got to keep hollering, hooping, and squalling about who they are. Um, they, it's, watch, it's hard to hide jealousy and envy. It eventually will expose themselves. So everything hidden will be revealed. So what should you do? One, don't fight fire with fire. Maintain your integrity. Your integrity will reward you. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says Romans 12, 17. God is going to repay. He sees it. You have to maintain your integrity. Don't tolerate disrespect. There are some people you do have to um, distance yourself from. Remember, I wrote a book. Hopefully, you've read it by now called Misguided Loyalty. And I didn't wrote that book. I'm sorry. Not, but I, the, the teaching I did, a YouTube teaching called Misguided Loyalty. Always take the high road. So some people you do have to love from a distance. Remember, in due season, God will respond. Read uh, Psalm 73 and Psalm 37. Don't envy the wicked or those, or don't envy the wicked or those workers of iniquity. In due season, God can bless you with it. God will respond. Remember this, you will always outlive a lie. How long? Always. That in between time now, it gets a little rough. But the anointing and the gift of God on your life and the anointing of God on your life will, will actually, uh, endorse you but you will always outlive a lot and don't let what someone tries to do distract you from who you are and don't you start going over be trying to compete with people don't fight fire with fire don't you try to compete with people it's not going to work on your behalf god got you the favor rests upon you don't don't go there with people okay it's only a distraction and don't get distracted by the foolery i'm dr samaria m Cole. make sure you uh like comment subscribe my books request speaking engagements, my vlogs, all that's at my website, samariacobra.com, training resources, www.trainingchristianleaders.com. And of course, if you are located in the state of North Carolina, or you can get here and you are dealing with the after effects of having family, friends, and frenemies all in your ear, being trying to compete with you, and you're just trying to live your best life, honey, go to therapy at kingdomcreativecounseling.com. If you're not able to get to the state of North Carolina, go to uh, www.psychologytoday.com and find a therapist in your local Area, this is not uh, endorsed or uh, what do you call it? Not endorsed, uh, sponsored by psychologytoday.com. Okay, God bless you. We'll be back in the day and in the time of the banger. And again, next time uh, we will talk about the pain, the curse of being the responsible one. Y'all, it's been, it's been real, real, real. Love y'all. Bye.